This is the Fight Dialogue. My name is Tim. This is a list that I put together of the guards that I believe uh, do the best in MMA. And just as a disclaimer, I'm not a professional fighter or anything like that, but I have been studying jujitsu since 2010, and a lot of my opinions are based off of observations that I've taken from that. So there's actually a lot of different types of guards out there if you know anything about jujitsu, but there's really only a few guards that are suitable for MMA. Some of the guards on this list I'm sure you've probably seen, some you may have not. So with that being said, let's break down the criteria for what a good guard is for MMA. So the most successful guards are the ones that are very versatile. It has to be a combination of good defense and offense in order to do well. So in my opinion, the three most important things that you need for a dangerous guard would have to be the ability to submit somebody from your guard, the ability to sweep somebody, and the ability to defend yourself against strikes. That last one is probably the most important aspect of a guard in MMA. So let's take a look at the first guard on the list, which is the closed guard. If you've ever watched an MMA fight that's gone to the ground, you've probably seen this guard before. It's as old school jujitsu as it gets. Cron Gracie and the Diaz brothers are the ones that are probably the most famous for using it in MMA. All three of those guys have a similar style. They've been known for being able to win fights from their guard. In a straight up jujitsu match, uh, the closed guard is considered to be almost an advantageous position depending on who's using it. Uh, but for MMA, it's really uh, a neutral position at best. I would say there's a moderate uh, probability of being able to submit somebody from your closed guard. The range of different submissions you can use there makes it really tricky for the guy on top. There's also a moderate amount of sweeps that you can use from the closed guard as well. And the great thing about that is usually when you sweep somebody from the closed guard, you're going to end up mounting uh, the person that you just swept. The downfall of the closed guard is your actual ability to protect yourself from incoming strikes. Now, granted, uh, you know, high level guard players are very adept in being able to use overhooks to break down the person's posture and protect themselves from strikes. But many MMA fighters over the years have actually started to specialize in ground and pound. So even in the best case scenario, you're probably gonna take at least a few punches from your closed guard. All right, next up, we got the 50-50 guard, and this is as new school as it gets as far as jujitsu goes in the world of MMA. It was made famous by the Ultimate Fighter winner, Ryan Hall, uh, and it's definitely the most bizarre type of guard on this list that I have here. So to the untrained eye, 50-50 guard may just look like a guy falling back for a leg lock. And that's essentially what it is, except there's a few subtle differences in the leg positioning. For the true 50-50 guard, you need to have your legs locked in a figure four around one of the opponent's legs. From there, you'll have the ability to attack with leg locks and ankle locks. It's perhaps one of the most complicated guards out there, uh, so it's going to take a real technician to utilize it. Therefore, the only people that are going to really shoot for this 50-50 guard are people that specialize in it. At the moment, there's not a lot of MMA fighters out there that even know how to counter it. And the number of high-level leg lockers transitioning from the submission grappling world to MMA is quickly growing. So basically what this means is if you see somebody initiate the 50-50 guard in an MMA fight, there is an extremely high probability that a submission will follow. The fight finishing potential for this position is just too much to ignore. Unfortunately, that is the only real advantage that this guard has over the rest of the guards on my list. It's not that type of guard that you're going to really use to sweep people. You can transition out of it to go for a sweep from other, you know, Ashigurami type positions, but oftentimes this leads to a scramble. So, you know, it's not really that reliable in terms of being able to sweep somebody. And as the name 50-50 guard implies, if both fighters figure for their legs, each person essentially has a form of guard at the same time. You know, not to mention, if you're not careful, um, you can be pretty easily punched in the face from here. 
Leg locks require you to commit both hands to the application of them, so it's harder to protect yourself from strikes, especially since most MMA guys don't know a real technical counter for getting out of 50-50 guard, so their first instinct is going to be to try to punch you in the face. So here we have the rubber guard. And despite this guard being, you know, a bit unorthodox, it's found its home in MMA um, in recent years. And that's uh, in large part due to the creator of the guard, Eddie Bravo. He coaches some of the biggest up and comers in MMA today. And the UFC's commentator, uh, Joe Rogan, actually earned his Brazilian Jiu Jitsu black belt from Eddie Bravo. So the basic concept of this guard is to break down your opponent's posture and pull your own legs up and over the shoulders of the guy on top and this gives you an incredible amount of leverage there's many different micro positions within the rubber guard each one having a completely nonsensical name i'll start with a fucking uh, mission control and flip you over to a fucking zombie and from there to night of living dead when i put my fucking i lock you in with my butterfly hooks and then from there i end you up with a fucking dp and a sweep and i got my balls in your face how you gonna like me now you know what i'm saying so needless to say it's a very complicated and technical guard but some of the later stage positions of the rubber guard give you massive potential when you're trying to choke a guy or shoulder lock the guy it's not really the type of guard where you're going to be sweeping dudes left and right but there are some reversals there that you will see and they do work pretty well but really the greatest thing about this guard is that you are so well protected from strikes in this position the person on top will not be able to get enough distance to land anything significant on you unless they escape your legs. But adversely, it's one of the only guards where you can throw your own strikes with great effectiveness, particularly elbows. The thing that kind of sucks about rubber guard is you do have to be flexible to some degree in order to apply it. Granted, there's angles that you can switch to and shift to in order to make it easier on your knees and hips, but nevertheless, the guys I've seen have the most success with rubber guard are the most limber and flexible guys. All right, so we also got the butterfly guard, and this is a type of open guard where instead of you having your legs wrapped around the person's waist, you actually have your legs underneath them and they're used to elevate and reverse the person on top. It's also used to create distance and to quickly stand up to your feet. It's for this reason that it's gotten a ton of praise from MMA fighters, even from fighters who aren't necessarily grapplers because they will learn this guard as a means to escape from a grappling exchange entirely. There's probably nobody with a better butterfly guard than Marcelo Garcia, as you can see here, as he uses it to absolutely embarrass some of the best grapplers in MMA. As I mentioned, it's very much a guard used to off balance people. So it has an extremely high potential for sweeps. Even if you only have one butterfly hook in, there's not a ton of submissions from the butterfly guard, but if you are good with guillotines and kimuras, uh, you do have those options there. The bad thing about butterfly guard, I would say is if you're not constantly actively and aggressively off balancing the person, um, it's pretty easy for them to pass your guard. And if they flatten you out on your back, you can be hit there with strikes just as easily as you can from like a closed guard. So last but not least on this list, we have a lesser known guard known as the Williams guard. The name comes from a Henzo Gracie black belt named Sean Williams, who is known for using it. The guard is sometimes referred to as the Lister grip or the shoulder pin guard. The premise of this position is similar to that of the rubber guard. So basically you're gonna break down the posture of the guy on top, except you're gonna use your arm and wrap it under your leg around their shoulder and from there you're going to be able to submit them if you can lock somebody down in a tight williams guard there's a good chance you're going to catch them with something there there's potential for arm bars triangles omoplatas very high submission potential there isn't a lot of sweeps from the williams guard per se but it is essentially a closed guard 
So at any time, you can kind of just transition back to a more traditional closed guard and go for a traditional sweep. So just like in the rubber guard, the person on top is going to have some real trouble trying to punch you from there. So you can be a bit more relaxed and meticulous when you're setting up your submissions from there. I would even go so far as to say that the Williams guard has a slight advantage over the rubber guard because you don't really have to be flexible at all in order to apply it. It's as simple as grabbing behind your own leg. Unfortunately, the Williams guard is one of the more rare guards and underutilized positions of MMA, and not enough people know about it in order to appropriately use it. So it's difficult to fully gauge how successful it can or can't be without more fighters trying it out. So that's my list of the best guards for MMA. They were in no particular order. Uh, they're just the five that I think would do best in MMA. Let me know in the comments if you agree or disagree. And uh, thanks a lot for watching, guys. Take care.